And we close tonight's program with Grace Ann Walden, who is a food critic and editor, tour operator. We're so pleased to have you back. I, I, did a, I had a private tour of uh, North Beach with you. And right, was, we had a lovely dinner, it's, too. It's amazing how, how many people, yes, it was, and how many people know you, and you can tell, have that kind of par partial fear, partial admiration <laughs> when you walk in the door as we walk into. Oh, no partial fear. But even a, someone wrote about me, and they said, even the dogs in the park know her. Oh, I tell my the, heavens. <laughs> it's amazing, and, and how well we're treated. So you're well, well respected in, in the community. I, well, <coughs> I wanted to have you back. It. I have you back to talk about 2006 as we look at some of the restaurants that came and went. Uh, but I wanted to uh, kind of segue off of uh, John King, who was, we were talking about how the city's changing architecturally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But as the change go architecturally, he was mentioning the, the super rich who may inhabit these new buildings. The restaurants change. Right. Decisions on what kind of a restaurant, what are you serving, how much is it going to cost? Right. Um, I think. Are we seeing signs already of that? I think so. When I came here um, 30 years ago, of course, I was a very small child. Um, the one thing that I uh, r recognized right away about San Francisco, as opposed to New York, I came from the New York metropolitan area, was that San Francisco didn't have the snobbish restaurants. There really weren't many of those. They had you had the upscale Doros and and, and uh, Ernie's yes. and places like that. Uh, but you had a great many restaurants in the middle that were moderately priced that almost anybody could afford. And then you had, of course, inexpensive Chinese restaurants and, you know, uh, fry places and things like that. Um, we are getting more and more expensive restaurants. And if I say to someone, oh, but... Um, the entrees are under 40, <laughs> you know, they look at me and their eyes roll, you know, under 40, they expect to spend 40 for a whole meal. But New York has already broken that barrier of the above $40 entree. And I'm sure we're not far behind. Um, I went to a steakhouse in Cupertino that has flown in actual real Kobe steak from Japan. And I had a filet mignon that cost $175. And as a friend of mine said, no sides with that. No, the sides were extra. So what we want to keep in the city is diversity. And what we want to keep out of the city is that look down the nose kind of snobbism uh, that we've never had here. I, I found California and San Francisco very egalitarian. But the only way I think and, and what I see happening is that more and more of the top chefs are opening second, third, fourth, fifth places. So they're kind of like becoming chains to some extent. And it's like when you go to Vegas, you and I have talked about mm -hmm. Vegas. You can go to Vegas and you can eat at almost any famous chef in the world's restaurant. But is that chef there? And is it the food that that chef really creates? Or is it the sous chef that's been put in place to recreate the experience you would have in France or New York or in Texas. So uh, I fear the rise of chains, and I know why they do it. Uh, if you have more than one restaurant, you have buying power. You have buying power, and in some cases, uh, for example, like Max's restaurants, there are 19 or 20 of them. They have a commissary down in South City, and uh, I don't think South City or Delhi City, and they make a lot of the things that yeah, are going and, and into the restaurants. There's been, a, uh, there's been advancements in the technology and being able to prepare mm -hmm. and preserve and ship. Exactly. Exactly. So that, but you know, the, the first part that you were talking about, the, the fact that the, the restaurants cost more to open. Oh, millions. Cost more to operate because our city in, uh, likes to uh, add regulations and requirements. Oh, yeah. That's causing real problems. So you ha do you have no choice except to either go to the one end where you may not even have servers like you mentioned last time you were here, mm -hmm. or the other end where you spend $17 million just on the decor? Are, are, are we causing that to happen? That is, as a city, are we, are we causing that to happen? Or is that just the trend in the country mm -hmm. that we're seeing our cities split between the rich and the poor and therefore the restaurant splitting between the rich and the poor. I, I think to some extent that is true. Uh, however, in San Francisco, 
being the last place to go before you jump in the ocean, you always have these creative people that want to do a restaurant. You know, mm -hmm. they want to really that what they want you to do is come into their living room and be part of their life. And so you'll always have people who, for example, one of my favorite restaurants this year is La Chicha. La Chicha opened up in a former pizza parlor, mm -hmm. and it's a husband and wife. She was a bartender at Globe. He was a chef at various restaurants. And so it's a mom and pop operation. Are you packed in? Is it noisy? Is there no fancy decor? Maybe a couple of pictures <laughs> of Sardinia? Yes. Is the food lovely? Is it wonderful? Is it rustic? Is it authentic? Yes. And consistent? And consistent. And they're located in Noe Valley. They're located in Noe Valley. They're on uh, th at where church ends at 30th Fifth. You know, that leads us then, uh, um, the if you were to categorize your list, and I, I want to make sure our viewers know that we mm -hmm. are going to get to Grace and Wolves' list. In general, though, you would agree that uh, we're seeing uh, more, uh, the more of an ethnic influence. That's definitely a, a positive. Mm -hmm. uh, any other? Uh, trends of what's been opening that you say, ah, that's happening, that's beginning to happen. Oh, yes. I, I, very, very true. And I think it's happening in New York as well, uh, to some extent. Uh, the next wave is happening. Um, I, for years, wrote, I, I used to go and look at uh, Zagat Guide or some of the other guides, the Gaio Guide, which I used to write for, and I would count the number of Italian restaurants and count the number of French. And when I first started doing it, there were more French and less Italian. And then, all of a sudden, you couldn't walk down the street that somebody wasn't pouring olive oil on you and giving you a bruschetta to eat. So that happened for a while. And then we got into a lot of Pan-Asian, not Pan-Asian, but fusion, which was done well in some cases and not done well in other cases. You know, you can't necessarily As take... As an example, what were the ones you think did well here in San Francisco when that... Uh, a fusion? Well, on my list, I have some fusion restaurants. Even that now, are, then? Even now, okay. that are new. And one of them is Bushi Thai. has a funny name, Bushi Thai. And Chef Waka used to be at Ondine. And he combines Japanese and French technique and foods. So you might have a rack of lamb, but the sauce is a port wine with a little wasabi in it. And you go, ooh, wasabi port wine. Mm. Taste it. That's it. Taste it. And the name again? Bushy Thai. And they're located at? They're located. I can't give the exact. Yeah, but uh, it's uh, Post Street. Okay. It's right in the middle of Japantown. S okay. So fusion is still still uh, a reality in, in it's a still city a reality. as San Francisco. Exactly. And another reality that's happening, and uh, the one of the greatest proponents of it is Beetle Nut. You can, uh, to get into Beetle Nut, you almost have to give them your car keys. But Beetle Nut is Pan-Asian. So... One par person in the party wants to have a Korean dish, another wants a Chinese, another wants a Japanese. They're doing all different Asian foods under one. But not necessarily fusion or creativity. No, no. Authentic, authentic. But together. Yeah, on Union Street. On Union okay. Street, exactly. And also, the other thing that we see in trends is the rise of Indian cuisine. And we have two very good Indian restaurants in Palo Alto. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have uh, Om. We're seeing South Indian in the city. And a restaurant that I went to the, for brunch that was absolutely wonderful, Dosa, which is on Valencia Street. And they make the South Indian people make these large crepes. And they so, them uh, soft or? Uh, a little crispy. Okay. Not, not like a French crepe, because they're uh, fermented rice that they leave overnight. But... Uh, and they fill them with vegetables and all sorts of good stuff. That's dosa. Dosa on dosa. Valencia. Now this this is uh, interesting uh, that and we we chatted beforehand. India uh -huh. going through also a tremendous uh, demographic change, wealth change. Yupification. And from a couple articles I read, uh, they are doing that. They are taking their traditional meals and they're doing extraordinarily creative things with right. it. Is that? Now, are we seeing any restaurants in, in San Francisco that are, are, are getting some of this new wave of Indian I food? I think that will happen. What we're seeing right now in San Francisco, what we're seeing is French chefs and others kind of bringing 
some of the Indian flavors into their menus, and other chefs too, that they're experimenting with Indian flavors. They're sick of Mediterranean, and, and they want to go on to some other new flavors. And India is not one cuisine. There's so many different states. And there are so many seasonings. Exactly. I mean, the people, as I understand it, curry is not a seasoning. No, no, no. It is one of those yes. uh, combinations. And every woman, every good Indian woman has her own curry mix yeah. that she mixes herself. Another trend I want to mention is Turkish food. And again, that is tied to immigration. Just like 30 years ago, I never had Vietnamese, Vietnamese food in my life. All of a sudden... Here was all this Vietnamese food because of the boat people and others that came to this land and came to San Francisco. Now we're getting Turkish food. Who ever heard of Turkish food? But there's Ala Turka down on Geary and Troya on Clement Street. Uh, very good places. And, of course, uh, the, the Mexican food has now come. It, it's now, I think, at the level of Italian food and, and European foods. I mean, and it's becoming more We don't have enough restaurants, though, that are really yeah. doing it. In we Mexico still, City, of course. Oh, fantastic. Now that we're fantastic. talking about oh, what yeah. I'm talking about here. Uh, it's uh, a level of the European. Oh, food. absolutely. And with wine uh, pairings, uh, a cookbook author like Patricia Quintana, you know, uh, writes these books where she has all wine pairings with ah. her food. The only restaurant in the city that even comes close is Maya, which I like very much. It's down on 2nd near Harrison. I like that. Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. Only well, I wanted, left. yeah, I just want to talk about some of my other favorites. Yeah, two minutes left. Ooh, yeah. my heavens. Um, Hime is uh, probably the best sushi place in the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're on Lombard Street, right in the middle of Motel Row. Huge place. And they have a parking lot, which I always say thank and you. And spelt for those? H I M E. Okay. Hime. And also Kwa, which is up in, uh, in North Beach. This is Daniel Patterson who had Elizabeth Daniel, and he's one of those new wave high-tech chefs, and he's uh, excellent. But with neighborhood places, uh, of course, Terzo in the Mission, which is very good, um, Mediterranean, basically. And, of course, I spoke to you about uh, La Chicha and Poling Lounge. Poling Lounge is on Fulton Street, and uh, they do kind of a Southeast Asian, a different flavors and it's a lounge so it's a little loud and they're fancy cocktails but you know great selection yeah I think that uh, what I want to do is I want to make sure people have your website you maybe could put you these have reviews will be by the end of this I've been a little ill so yeah. but these reviews will be on my website by the end of the week good and maybe you can make a note for those who, have, who viewed you sure uh, about that and also your exciting project with the recipe uh, cards. Collection, yes. Yeah, that'll uh -huh. be at your website, too. That'll be they at the can, website. You can buy the cards. Uh, well, it's cards? a book. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's a box, but it's not out yet until February. Okay, well, you put all that at the website. Now, let's give that address cool. out, the web sure. website. It's uh, graceannwalden.net, okay. uh, spelled like you spell it. All right. Well, look, <laughs> in other words, they can get all the uh, great restaurants that you mentioned. Right. Plus this, uh, this new project you're working on. Exactly. But also, if they send me an email, they can be on my gram list. And once a month, I send out a newsletter with my restaurant picks and a recipe. Excellent. Okay. Thanks for coming back, Grace. Thank you. Good to see you. And uh, thank you for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Visit our website at www.sfunscripted.com.